Mike, let's finish with telling, tell me about BRAF MEK CDK4 6 inhibitors. I mean, now you're into a triple drug combination, which sounds kind of interesting, but I just don't know much about it. What can you tell us? Yeah, so, you know, the genetic studies that we've done of melanoma have confirmed uh, that um, almost all cutaneous melanomas have oncogenic events that activate the ras raf map kinase signaling pathway, which again is the basis of the development of the BRAF and MEK inhibitors. It's pretty clear that the second almost universal event in cutaneous melanomas are aberrations in cell cycle regulators, which really sort of feed into the P16 CDK4 axis. And it really sort of seems like in order for melanoma to, to develop and progress, it's really essential to lose control of cell cycle progression. Uh, and so there's a potential therapeutic opportunity, therefore, of targeting that pathway. So we actually have new agents that target CDK4, which have been approved in breast cancer and are showing activity in other cancers as a viable therapeutic strategy. Um, and so we've actually done trials before with CDK4 inhibitors combined with MEK inhibitors, often targeting uh, RAS mutant patients based on promising preclinical studies. Um, we now heard at this uh, ASCO about early results from a triplet combination of the BRAF inhibitor ankorafenib, the MEK inhibitor benimetinib, and the CDK4-6 inhibitor ribociclib. Um, interestingly, the data actually suggested that this uh, triple combination had a lower response rate and, and progression-free survival than what had been reported previously with the ankorafen and benimetinib combination. Um, now, that being said, the dose of ankorafenib used in this triplet was actually lower than what was used in the ankorafen and benimetinib combination. And they also noted that there was a significant number of patients who had dose delays and interruptions due to toxicity with the triplet combination. And I think it's one of the challenges that we have is we were very fortunate when we combined BRAF and MEK inhibitors together that that combination was tolerated better than either single agent alone. The question with adding third drugs to that is whether that will be the case again or whether we're going to have to come up with new sort of dosing strategies and regimens to overcome problems with toxicity. Yeah, I guess one of the more encouraging triplets I've heard about, and we didn't hear much about it at this meeting, but we've heard about it in the past ASCO in 2016, was the use of uh, BRAF MEK plus PD-1 inhibitors, and mm -hmm. I had a conversation with Tony Ribas, who's certainly a leader in that field, and he told me that he thought that there was really modest increase in toxicity, and in his extended experience, very, very good responses, although BRAF MEK will have a great response rate. So Jason, I mean, do, do, do we see hope for uh, PD-1 blockade or PD-L1 blockade plus BRAF MEK? Uh, well, whether we have hope or not, we're definitely going to find out. Um, so there are a whole bunch of these trials that have already been launched, um, and I think it's an open question. I think we can make a scientific rationale for why it's a good idea, but just like we were talking about uh, reading out what happens, I think you could also make a case for sequential therapy and how we're going to know it's really better than one way or the other, I think is gonna be an open question. We'll have to see how these data sets evolve. So yeah, I guess Jason, I guess one thing I would sort of postulate, and this comes back to something that Georgina and I worked on together, we know that there are certain populations of patients we're doing really well with, with our current therapies, but there are also groups where the outcomes have not been impacted nearly as much. And so as we talked about looking at the predictors of, of outcomes with BRAF MEK combination therapy, we know that patients with very high LDH are not doing as well. And that holds true for immunotherapy as well. And it actually sort of patients with large bulky tumors. And I wonder in terms of this question of when can you get a readout on whether a new agent is adding something is whether there's a particular strategy for taking those groups of patients where the outcomes still remain poor and using that as your place to try and figure out initially whether you do get an additional benefit or not with the idea that, you know, it's, it doesn't exclude the possibility that you could do even better in patients with lower risk disease, but whether we need to think about designing trials specifically for patients who actually have the worst outcomes and sort of that was reflected in the ASCO presentations today of focusing on patients with brain metastases where we know that we need to um, be more aggressive, take more risks to improve outcomes more. I would argue even without brain metastases, those patients with very high LDH and with high tumor burden are groups of patients where there's still an unmet need for effective therapies. Well, you're raising the bar, Mike. That's yeah, that's a pretty are, pretty difficult say. bar.